If you're new here, let me get this out of the way. I am obsessed with open baffles. And today, I think I'm on a few experiments that is going to take what is already amazing about open baffles and potentially exploding it into something better. I don't know why, but for some reason the other day I was looking at videos of home theaters. I don't know, I was bored. And uh, I noticed, I might notice, and I'm sure you've all seen it, right? Where you have on a Dolby Atmos home theater system where uh, some people are using these top firing uh, speakers that they put on top of their mains. And apparently this is supposed to create a type of immersion and feels like the reflections that, they're, that the speaker is shooting up onto your ceiling and reflecting back down to you. Um, the, the sounds that the soundtrack feeds through these top firing speakers usually is like ambient or ambient or effects um, based on the scene that's happening. Either, you know, rain, helicopter noise, planes overhead, birds flying, you name it. And these reflections are supposed to be shot up, hit the, hit the ceiling and come back down to you, obviously with a minute delay compared to what's coming out of the center channel and uh, the main left and right and helps create this sense of immersion like as if you were there so that these things feel like um, they are actually on top of you. But it got me thinking. Who doesn't love a good soundstage? I love a good soundstage. So an open baffle speaker radiates out the front and radiates out the back. So what's radiating out the back is in a different phase than what's radiating out the front. What if, similar to a dipole, dipole speaker, where in a dipole you have a rear firing driver. Most of the time it's a tweeter though. And I'm pretty sure that most of the time that rear firing is in the same phase as the driver's firing the front. What, what are you saying? Not at all, a dipole speaker, you have the front pole and the rear pole. On the front pole, it pushes. In the rear, it pulls. Considering an open baffle speaker, all rip has a natural pulling in the back, which gives it a dipole effect. What if we were to add a driver in the rear that we could control the gain to choose the amount of pull it does? Mm, it's hard to talk like this, gotta go by. So I thought, okay, let me try something else. Let me try with a top firing driver that I got inspired by looking at the Dolby Atmos top firing drivers. And my hunch is that a top firing driver with diffusion on the ceiling should give more presence, more emphasis, I guess, on the tone densities in your soundstage, in the stereo image. It's a hunch, I'm not an engineer, I'm just having fun here. So I have these fast dates already on these little baffles that I have, because I was swapping them back and forth between, uh, with my F-15s as, as the main full range driver in my open baffles. I figured, why not? Let's just try it, I got them. Instead of me buying tweeters or something. So first there's the phase. The front's pushing. There's already a natural element of pulling in the back because they're open baffle. What the top firing driver is doing or what I'm playing with is I'm increasing the amount of pull. So if I pull too hard, too much, then the push is not going to perform as well. Okay? And if I don't do it enough, it's like nothing's happening because it's already pulling in the back. It's an open baffle speaker. So when I find that sweet spot, and I think the sweet spot right now in my room is probably having the top firing driver, which is pulling, not pushing. It's doing the opposite of what the front driver is, is having it maybe one to four decibels louder than the front. If I go over that, it starts, it, it, it starts to distort the image and you start to get like this big reverb effect and it starts to cancel out the mids coming out of the front. Why I think it might be doing that is on top of the phases, there's other things I have to consider. So right now, both the top firing driver and the front firing driver are operating in the same band of frequencies. I have not yet applied a high pass filter, which is what I wanted to do 
with the top one i'll get to it i just got to find the right capacitor to, to to get the job done and right now i don't have one they're operating the same band so if one starts to overwhelm the other it's going to they're going to start canceling each other out i don't want them to cancel each other out so that's why i have to keep the decibel level of the front firing driver within that tiny margin tiny margin has to be just a little bit louder just because it's pulling and it's pointing upwards if it's level matched it's very hard to tell the difference there's a little it, it does do a little something it adds a hint of density but when you go above by one two three decibels oh something funky and awesome is going on It is taking the image and my sound stage and creating a much higher contrast between the instrument or the singer in the foreground and what's in the background, especially spaciousness. It, that's it. It is playing with that spaciousness, helping that level of presence and realism. And it feels like I'm not even in the crowd. It feels like I'm on stage with them. And yet they're not in my face. I just feel like I'm on stage with them. Because when you're in the crowd, you're feeling the room, you're feeling the audience. When you're on stage, you're feeling the instruments. But if the spaciousness becomes too far, meaning I've increased the decibel levels too high on the top firing driver, it starts to make the image fuzzy. And as soon as it gets fuzzy, you start to lose all of that depth that you were gaining. So it's a very, very tricky curve. As you get to the peak of, of, of perfection, I guess, in, in the matching of the decibel level, the line of perfection flirts with the ravine of, of, of catastrophe. <laughs> As you're hitting that sweet spot, it's like, wow, your brain wants you to, let's, push that let's see what what if i just crank it by another half to oh it just collapsed on me so the phase important decibel level between the the the, the driver operating on a different pole than this one and the other issue i'm probably experiencing right now which is probably explaining why the image is not as tack sharp as it usually is. I mean, it's 97% of it. Like it's, I know it because I know my system really, really, really well. Um, most, most people would probably not tell the difference, but the, the issue I'm referring to is that I'm using different drivers. So naturally using different drivers, you have a timing issue that is slightly off. Now, I'm not saying it's really off. If it was really off, everything would sound absolutely horrendous. It would not be, it would not be fun to listen to. But as soon as you have different kinds of drivers, it's kind of impossible that just by default on their own that they're gonna be exactly time aligned. They're built a little bit differently. It's not the same materials, it changes. So if I had exactly the same driver, that might be really interesting. And I think by having the same driver, if you're keeping the same band of frequency between the top and the front, that matters even more. Now, if I were to change the frequency band that the top is firing so that it creates a pull only in the in in the high frequencies that issue would be diminished it would not be as present and obviously my other issue is tonality because i'm using different amplifiers to drive each of these so that i can control the decibel level of the one that pulls versus the one that pushes so that's my current experiment New, 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 don't like it. I don't like it at all, actually. It is goddamn fun. And it's not just, because guys, there's a difference between reading up or having someone tell you, oh, that's the relationship. That's how it works, okay. But when you actually experience it and get to hear it for yourselves, for me, that's where my brain makes the real connections between what I've been reading, what I've been told, versus what's happening for real. And the more I do that, the more things become second nature to me. Anyway, hope it's the same for you guys. That's why I'm trying these things. Um, 
I hope I am coherent in how I've been explaining this. There's just quite a lot of factors going on in my head. Um, so stay tuned. This is just the beginning. I want to do so much more with this uh, to see what I can do. And I'm probably going to build another set of baffles to help me fine tune this. Um, because right now, until I completely understand how, what's going on here, I'm going to try to get a myself uh, my hands on another set of either F15s or Fast 8s so that I can have the same drivers. I'm going to get myself a proper set of capacitors so that I can apply the proper high pass on the top firing driver. And once I figure out what's great about all this, that's when I'm going to get into the crossover build. Because until I really understand what I'm going for, what the sweet spot's going to be, I don't want to get into the crossover build because everything I determine now and I understand now is going to determine what components I'm going to have to get and how I'm going to design the crossover to make this work so that it's driven by a single amplifier. Anyways, that's the goal. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. See you guys soon.